Please give a warm welcome to Michał Grodecki. Hello, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to present it here. And as a matter of fact, it fits very well with the Michal presentation just previously. I will tell a little bit more how we evolve our integration. At least it's not a whole Motorola, so in projects in which I was participating so far. The first question is, can you really evolve and is evolution working? So here I would like to answer it. Uh, let's see how it was done in Motorola Solutions. We will start in, pretty, in a pretty old uh, times so when we still were using Waterfall. And at that time, we had something we called integration loads. And then with the next uh, changes and activities, we move it to the more and more continuous integration nowadays. So I would like to say what was good and what was challenging in all this uh, approaches and how it influenced the next steps. Michal introduced me very well, uh, so not much to say about myself. Uh, I'm very long with Motorola from 2001, started as a software engineer, then I switched to project management. I was actively participating in um, transformation the processes to agile. I will change the photo so you don't only remember the monkey, but also myself. And now I'm leading system integration team in Dimetra system. Uh, really, do we need to integrate the systems? And from my experience, I have to say, yes, we need, especially when the systems are big and complex, because if you develop the new functionality in one application, it doesn't mean that the whole system will work. You need to integrate it, put the application and blocks together, see whether it works or not, and then this is really what shows uh, that the new functionality is available end-to-end -end for the end user. So you needed to check interfaces, to test new features or functionality you just added to the build, and to verify that you didn't spoil anything. As a matter of fact, this integration really drives the whole delivery schedule, how quickly you can deliver the solution to the market. And uh, uh, now it's the time really to don't think about it as a phase, but really to think it as a one of the activities in the development cycle. So it's not something as a phase done somewhere very often at the end, but it's activity which is done just during development. Then the impact of the schedule will be smaller. Uh, I would like to discuss three approaches which over these years we had in Motorola. These are the integration loads, capability integration, and 24 our integration and the integration loads as i said they are coming from waterfall from famous v model which we were using for years before safe transformation and this were like we had like a release once a year in motorola at that time we had three to six integration loads at the end of the release they were about four weeks long so as you can imagine, it was the huge impact to the delivery schedule itself because just the integration was three or six months in a duration. It was properly planned and the scope for each load was defined upfront. But it had benefits. It had benefits that the teams were doing the integration. So already team representatives were involved in verifying that the application they are developing is really working and it cooperates with the other system components. It was planned, was a set time and the scope of the integration and it was good and bad. Good was that we were prepared to make the integration, so we had allocated staffing to do the integration. And it's very important, as I will be showing later, but just a hint. Now there is a tendency that we are forgetting about the integration when it's just the activity during development. In this solution, it was planned and we had the staffing allocated for it. We also had a proper lab prepared by the system test team when where the integration was performed 
challenges were very long integration period, very late in the release. Problems are found at the end of the release and then sent to the teams which are already working on something different. So they need to go back, remind or refresh how it's working this way and uh, fixing something what they already started working on another thing. And because uh, the scope of the loads was uh, planned for a subset of the features in the release when teams were usually developing on the branches and integrating this functionality to the mainline just before the integration, which caused a lot of big bang effects of such a big merge when you developed code on the two independent branches. And then this plan, so that's a minus of the plan. First, we had to plan it, and then after really a couple of weeks, the plan was not valid anymore, so we had to check the status of the development every week and update the plan accordingly to include faced issues, delays in the applications, and see what we really can integrate in these planned loads. That was before save. Now the save came in and it changed a lot. It changed a lot in the processes we were using in Motorola. It introduced program increments. So now the planning time frame was much shorter. That was good. So in our case, uh, program increment was uh, three months. And we were just planning the scope only for the three months. And the scope was divided into smaller chunks or parts. We call them ca capabilities. And that's why the name of the phase capability integration. And now it's becoming, it's not so much phase, it's becoming to be the activity as a matter of fact. And the goal was to deliver in each program increment, fully deliver, so develop, integrate, and certify at the system level a number of capabilities during this one uh, program increment. And the huge benefits as we started to talk about it. So we had now one code mail on because of the shorter time frame of the program increment, there was no chance really to develop independently and merge. Everything needs to be developed on the one code mail line. The scope of the functionality to integrate divided into capabilities was smaller. So it was more possible to do it quickly and, and we are expecting less uh, difficulties with integrating it. The feedback for the to, to development teams was shortened. They were really getting it just during the development. And uh, as in this approach, the really teams were owning the development plan when they were also owning the integration plan and were executing it. The challenges, uh, it was a little bit said even yesterday on the previous talks, the dependencies between the applications. So there was a tendency, and later it really becomes a rule, that because of a dependency to the applications and different capacity of the teams, we couldn't start the integration earlier in the PI. Usually all the capabilities were delivered to the tests close to the end of the PI. It uh, left almost no time for the integration and especially no time for uh, certification tests. And uh, it started that we pushed the um, certification tests, for instance, to the next PI or we created special off-ramp li uh, lines to, to, to certify the system. It also needed investment in our integration systems because now we start to do the integration during the development, so we need to have uh, capital to build the integration systems available all the time for the um, development teams. And uh, one of the things which we start to work on to really reduce this push towards the end of the PI of the capability delivery is Let's say to set the clear priorities to the team. So the most important things will be developed at the beginning and will be delivered at the beginning to the program increment. Unfortunately, it occurred not so easy because despite just the business value, also the other factors were included to set the priority, like technical dependencies between the functionality, what needs to be done first to make it easier to implement the next step. 
what are the uh, capacity of the teams. And the scope is not dividing equally to the teams. One of the teams, because there are specialized teams, one of the teams has much more work than the others, and all others need to wait for this biggest chunk to, to, to complete. So prioritization was a very difficult process, and it led to the situation that to prepare for the API planning, it took a few more meetings up front really to to prepare, to plan the program increment. So that was really overwhelming process. Didn't help so much, so we are still getting the integration at the end of the PI. With this experience, we changed again. We changed to even more frequent integration with the idea, let's deliver a partially developed functionality to the integration. The assumption is that this builds with the partially implemented functionality uh, shouldn't impact the existing functionality. So something what was working till now should still be working, and there will be small additions, which may or may not be working. And with this, we wanted to give the teams the possibility to execute the test daily. We call it 24-hour integration. I have here a small demo clip, which we prepared to show the teams uh, how it's going to be done. So I would like to play it just now for you. So that's the sequence of events which are going to happen in 24 hours. And first, in the afternoon, teams are promoting their new builds after running unit and uh, box tests to the integration. So they're verifying that these are stable and proper. Then in the evening, the integration, the system upgrade starts. Uh, so all the bits promoted to the integration are installed on the system automatically. And afterwards, the automated regression tests are executed. And this all is uh, unattended process, so we are able to run it over the night, in the morning, and the teams are able to see the results of the night regression tests and they see if something failed or not, if the systems were properly installed, and they are starting to take the actions to improve it. So we have the stand-up meeting of the integration team at 10.30 when the status is being discussed. So teams are confirming what they see in the results of the regression from the night. Uh, they are distributing the actions, what to follow up, when they have an almost full day to correct it. Sometimes they roll back to the previous village if this one, this new one is corrupted. Sometimes they are able to fix the issue and provide a new corrected build to the integration. And after such a day of work, uh, at the end of the day now, the builds are, can be promoted to system tests for certification. So this closed the 24 hour cycle. So, delivery in the afternoon, night regression, corrections during the day, and then at the end of the second day, promotion to the system tests. System tests are using the same system to automatically install these new builds in the system lab so they can start certification of the system. That's the approach which we are currently trying to. We implement it, and now we are tuning it, I would say. Now a little bit of the commercial of our team and, and copyright music. So, so that's our current approach. What we see as a benefit of this approach? <laughs> Uh, really, the one basic one is that 
I'm not sure if it's quick enough for me how, but for us, it's quick. <laughs> so the teams get the results in 24 hours. It's pretty short feedback cycle for them when you compare it to the previous approaches. And another factor which was not so obvious when we were really starting it, but then we noticed is a must have, it drives the automation in, on the, in all the aspects of the development. So the team level that they really have to have stable and uh, efficient build and unit box test environment to be able to provide the working build every day and on the integration system to automatically install the system and uh, execute automated system tests. And the challenges are that it's uh, difficult to deliver fully tested and stable product every day with partial functionality. And the frequency, so the frequency of a delivery is also the challenge. And we have the opportunity to, for the teams to deliver daily, but uh, as a goal, we really said to the teams, you need to deliver at least once a week new build with the functionality. If you can if you can deliver daily, but at minimum once a week a new build is really expected. So we can see that you are not developing too long before checking how it's working with the system. And automation. So automation is the thing that you need to strongly invest in this approach because manually you cannot do it. Also, during as an experience, as a lessons learned from running the 24-hour um, integration, we found out that we need to reduce system complexity. But if it's a complex, then always something will broke, and uh, you need to reduce the complexity by minimizing dependencies between the applications. You need to plan for it. It requires the investments in the software architecture. So there are different techniques like feature toggles, which can enable and disable new functionality you are adding to the build. The abstraction layers, which allows the team to refactor some of the components of their applications and until it's completed, it's not visible on the external interfaces. So still the regression functionality can be executed. The change in the mindset, how the um, epics or initiatives are being defined that you can deliver features incrementally and we are building on the features one by, by one. And you need to be very careful about the interfaces. So interfaces of the applications need to be backward compatible. So you can put a new application to the older version and this new application will be still working with the previous uh, release of the interfaces. It also needs to be fault tolerant, I call it, for the interface changes. So if the newer frame is coming on the interface and application still can get expected data from this new frame, which should be backward compatible, so it should be able to do so, then uh, it should be handled properly and just set a warning to the operator that message was somehow unexpected or with different format, but the data is available, so the system provides the functionality. A summary. So I've showed you the three approaches to the integration we are using. Integration loads, which was planned and already done by the teams. Capability integration, where the good part was that the scope was smaller. Integration was done more closely during the development and the teams on the integration and, and development process. Uh, we also developed on the one code main line. And the last approach, 24-hour integration, where we integrate really partially implemented functionality. We have very quick feedback to the teams, and we, it drives the automation of the whole processes, including improvements and automation of the upgrade process. And what we've learned, 
integrate often. And uh, coaches says, wise coaches says, but if it's a problem, then integrate even more often. So you will overcome it. Uh, don't wait for the fun full functionality in your application to start the integration. You need to deliver applications with the partial functionality, verify that the legacy functionality is not impacted, and these new pieces integrate on the fly when they are starting to be available. Uh, automate system upgrade and integration tests. And very important, always execute unit and box tests at the application level. Because when you are integrating number of the applications, uh, if one of them fails, then it blocks the whole integration and 10 teams don't get the feedback from such a uh, integration. If there are 10 applications when, and this um, stability and quality criteria is not met, then every day one of the applications will fail and practically the integration system is useless at that time. So it's very important that you build the quality from the top down. So you need to execute unit test, box test, provide the best build you can to the integration, and then you get the proper results from the integration level. It's not a replacement for the lower levels. It's verification at the system level. Plan effort for the integration. So now when it's not a phase, but it's the activity in the development, it still requires the effort. And teams need to consider it and plan it. But during the development, they will do the integration. Uh, it must have the teams own the integration, because they are the only one who can quickly react to the problems and changes which will happen during the development and the integration. And the last one is invest in the application architecture to make them as independent as possible, because it will simplify the system and allow for the integration tests. So now, is evolution working? As a matter of fact, we don't have so much time uh, as the evolution in nature. We need to inspect and adapt and learn from each other. I think that this conference is a great example of what you can learn and see how other people are working. And this knowledge needs to be distilled. And, and based on it, you need to quickly build a creative solutions to your problems. On the next slide, I have the example from a different industry, from the architecture, how the design of uh, Sagrada Familia was really modified. So I'm not sure if you know Sagrada Familia, this you know, <laughs> Barcelona, and the architect was Artoni Gaudi. But what was absolutely new for me is that the original design of this basilica was a neo-Gothic cathedral. And then it was changed to some modern architecture that the plans are now like 150 years old. And the construction started in 1882. But, anti but just now, it's regarded as a pretty modern architecture. Uh, so, so over 100 years, still being modern. And the history of it was that it was really designed as a Gothic cathedral. The architect was different at the time. That was De Villar. And he made it like this one. Um, you can imagine if it, uh, it looks like pretty gothic, dark inside cathedral church. And at the beginning of this invest of this building, the architect was changed to Antoni Gaudi, and with his mastership, he was able to redesign it. He used such a plaster models really to. Uh, see and assess how it can be modified. So even the foundations were already done for this Gothic, Gothic church. Uh, he used it and, and redesigned the whole building to the new one. So uh, he replaced the pillars of the much more uh, taller with uh, dividing the front like uh, branches to keep the roof. 
and the effect is really great. And uh, so it's a very light and spacious construction now. If you have a chance to be in Barcelona, then don't miss this uh, spot on your visit. It's worth seeing to get a little bit more feeling how this can be changed. And uh, if it's changed in the architecture, then I'm pretty sure it also can be changed in the software engineering. So this, I, that, that's the caveat here. Think, uh, think and build creative solutions quickly for your integration system. So let's evolve quickly. And, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. have time for only one question, so who's the first to ask? So, not necessarily related to integration, but maybe kind of. So you said that after the integration phase, uh, upon a successful test, you are promoting to the system phase. And since your integration is actually happening on the same system as as the system test, from what I understand. The question is, what is the actual value added uh, from, from the system test? What are the main difference between the integration test and the system test you run? Yeah, so uh, it, these are not the same systems. So you have a special dedicated system for integration and another one uh, bigger usually for um, uh, system tests. What is the same is the mechanism to load the system. And yeah, so benefits are that this integration system is less stable as the matter of fact, and engineers are actively participating in the tests on the integration system. When, after this sanity check on the integration system, it's passed to the system team and a formal, more formal testing is done by the system. Team. The system is usually bigger, has a certified configuration, for instance. Now, that's the next step we are going to take to really merge these two systems to pull in the system tests more to, to the integration. But that's something which is before us. So, hopefully, on the next ETI swarming, I will be able to say more how we approach it. But that's the reason. Thanks. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mihal. And applause. <laughs>